This is part of my overkill series where we take a very simple math problem and then we solve it in an extremely difficult way, hopefully highlighting some good ideas from higher mathematics. In this one, we're gonna show that the number 1,674 is not a perfect cube. And the tool that we're gonna use, which we will prove, is a special case of Fermat's last theorem. And that says, for all x, y, and z, which are non-zero integers, so I've written this as elements of the integers minus the number zero, there is no solution to the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. Okay, so let's get to the proof of this tool. So let's first of all, suppose that we have a solution. So in other words, we'll suppose that a comma b comma c is a solution to the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. So what we have here is a, b, and c are numbers such that a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed. Now the next thing that we wanna do is set D equal to the GCD of A, B, and C. And then notice that we can take our given information, in other words, A cubed plus B cubed equals C cubed. That's given because we know that that triple is a solution to our equation. We can take this and multiply this equation by one over D cubed. And that's going to give us a new equation. So we have A over D quantity cubed plus B over D quantity cubed equals C over D quantity cubed. And then since D is a common divisor of A, B, and C, that tells us that A over D, B over D, and C over D are all integers. And then furthermore, because D is the greatest common divisor, we also know that the GCD of A over D, B over D, and C over D is equal to one. So we're taking a collection of numbers, we're dividing by their greatest common divisor, and that leaves us with co-prime numbers. In other words, their remaining GCD is equal to one. So what that means is we may as well assume our solution involves co-prime parts. And by parts, I mean parts of the, this triple. And then further, we can assume two of the pop parts are odd and one is even. So let's just talk our way through that. I won't write it down. So if they are all three even, then that contradicts the fact that we are assuming that they're co-prime because in that, in that case, two would divide all of them. Now let's say that two of them are even. So if two of them are even, then that necessarily makes the third one even as well. So that doesn't work. Now next, if two of them are odd, that forces the other one to be even. So let's just look at that real quick. So if A and B are odd, then A cubed and B cubed are also odd, which makes their sum even, which makes C even. So in other words, it's impossible for them to all be odd, and that only leaves us with this possibility that two of them are odd and one of them is even. And furthermore, since we're working with a third power here and over all non-zero integers, we can rearrange this equation a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed to isolate a cubed, b cubed, or c cubed. So that gives us freedom to choose whichever one to be the even integer that we want. So let's go ahead and assume that C is even. So let's see what we've done so far. We've shown that we might as well assume that our solution has parts that are co-prime and two of those parts are odd and one is even. And further, we'll assume that the Z part is the even part. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this board and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so let's see where we are so far. So let's suppose that we have a solution A, B, C, where the GCD of A, B, and C is one. In other words, they are co-prime integers where A and B are odd and C is even. So we explained why we can make that assumption on the last board. Now, the next thing we wanna notice is since that A and B are odd, A plus B is even and A minus B is also even. And so since A plus B is even, we can write this as two U where U is some integer and since a minus b is even, we can write that as 2v, where v is some integer. 
And now what we can do is solve for a and b in terms of u and v. So notice we can add these two equations and we'll get 2a equals 2u plus 2v. In other words, a equals u plus v. And then we can subtract these equations and we'll get 2b equals 2u minus 2v. In other words, b equals u minus v. Now we can take these two versions of a and b and insert them into the equation a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed. And we know that a, b, and c satisfy this equation because again, we suppose that they were a solution to our equation x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna give us c cubed equals u plus v cubed um, plus u minus v cubed. But now using the binomial theorem, we can multiply that out or just writing this as u plus b v times u plus v times u plus v and then foiling everything. We'll get u cubed plus three u squared v plus three u v squared plus v cubed. So that's what we get for the first bit. And then for the second bit, we get u cubed minus three u squared v plus three u v squared and then minus v cubed. Okay, and now some stuff cancels. So notice that this v cubed and this v cubed cancels. And then this three u squared v and this three u squared v cancels. And then we're finally left with two u cubed. And so that would be combining this with this. And then we can also combine this with this and that will give us plus six u v squared. Now we can factor out a greatest common factor from this, and that gives us 2u times u squared plus 3v squared. So now I'm going to bring this up to here, and then we'll uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so on the last board we arrived at this equation, c cubed equals 2u times u squared plus 3v squared. Now we want to argue something about u and v. First of all, recall that a and b are relatively prime. That means that u and v are also relatively prime. So the GCD of u and v is one. Well, let's just say if the GCD of u and v was not one, then the GCD of a and b would also not be one, but that would make the GCD of a, b, and c also not one, so that would be a contradiction. Another thing that we can notice is that u and v have opposite parity, and we can see that because if they had the same parity, if they were either both even or both odd, then a and b would both be even. But again, we've decided that a and b are both odd, and so that wouldn't work. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down too. So u and v have opposite parity. Okay, great. So now let's see what that tells us. That tells us that u squared plus 3v squared is odd. So let's write that down. u squared plus 3v squared is odd. And now the next thing that we want to do is make a claim that the GCD of 2u with u squared plus 3v squared um, is equal to 1 or 3. Great. So we're going to do that in the following way. So let's suppose that we have a common divisor for 2u and u squared plus 3v squared. And so in other words, we have d, which divides 2u, and d, which divides u squared plus 3v squared. Now, since d divides 2u, that tells us that d also divides u. Because notice d over here is dividing an odd number. So that means that D can't divide two, so it has to divide U, great. But then that tells us that D divides U squared. Okay, good. But then D dividing U squared together with D dividing U squared plus three V squared tells us that D also divides three V squared, okay? But we're almost there. Notice it's impossible for D to divide V because if d divided v and it was not 1, then we would contradict the fact that the GCD of u and v is equal to 1. So what that tells us is that d has to divide 3. 
Okay, so let's reiterate that again. So since D divides three times V squared, we know that D either divides three or it divides V squared. If it divides V squared, then it also divides V. But if it divides V, then that's a contradiction because the GCD of U and V is one. Unless, of course, D was one in the first place. Okay, so now we got down here to D divides three. But if D divides three, then that means D is either equal to one or three because, again, three is prime. Okay, great. And that's actually going to split this off into two cases. So case number one will be the GCD of 2u and then u squared plus 3v squared equals 1. And then case number two will be that the GCD of 2u and u squared plus 3v squared equals 3. So we'll prove case one and then case two, well, I'll just write that that's your homework. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to working on case one. Okay, so let's see where we are. We've supposed that we have a solution to this equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. We called that the triple a, b, c. a, b, and c are co-prime. And then we've assumed that a and b are odd and c is even. We argued why we can make all those assumptions earlier. Furthermore, we made a derivation that uh, c cubed equals 2u times u squared plus 3v squared, where the GCD of u and v is 1, and also u and v have opposite parity. That broke down into two cases. Either the GCD of 2u and u squared plus 3v squared was 1, or it was 3. We're going to prove this first case, where those two are co-prime, and I'll leave it to you to check that other case where that GCD is one. Okay, so now notice that the product of these two numbers is a perfect cube, and these two, two, two numbers are relatively prime. But what that tells us is that each of these numbers itself is a perfect cube. So in other words, we can write R cubed equals two U and S cubed equals U squared plus three V squared. Now we're going to use a pretty tricky result from number theory, which we won't prove here, but I'll let you guys look up if you want to. And that is if we can write s cubed as u squared plus 3v squared, then we can also write s in the same form. In other words, s will be equal to e squared plus 3f squared, where the GCD of e and f is equal to 1. And you might say, well, what's the substitution that gets us from here to here? And so that substitution is given by u equals e times e squared minus 9f squared, and v equals 3f times e squared minus f squared. So this is a non-trivial lemma that says that if you can write s cubed in this form, then you can also write s in this form. Perhaps I'll make a bonus video when we pro where we prove that lemma. Okay, so let's see where that gets us. Since we've got this value for u in terms of e and f, we can write r cubed using that value for u. So now we have r cubed equals twice u, but u is equal to that guy over there. So we have two times e times e squared minus nine f squared, but that's equal to two times e times e minus three f times e plus three f. Okay. Now, since the GCD of E and F is 1, the GCD of 2E, E minus 3F, and E plus 3F is also 1. But these three numbers product to a perfect cube. That means each of them individually is a perfect cube. So in other words, we can write K cubed equals E minus 3F. We can write L cubed equals E plus 3F. And then finally, we can write m cubed equals 2e. But notice that if we do k cubed plus l cubed, we get m cubed. So in other words, we have constructed a new solution to this equation. So let's go ahead and write that. A new solution to x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. And that may not seem like a problem, but what we've done is we've started with one solution and constructed a solution which is smaller. And by smaller, I mean smaller in a so-called lexicographic ordering. 
on the absolute values of these. So let's maybe write it like this, the absolute value of K, absolute value L, absolute, absolute value M is strictly less than the absolute value A, the absolute value B, and absolute value C. And what I mean by a lexicographic order, I mean like alphabetical order. So if K and A are the same, then you move on to the next part. And then if L and B are also the same, then you move on to the next part, C and M. And now we can continually use this technique to construct smaller and smaller solutions. But notice all of our solutions come from triples of non-zero integers, and our ordering involves the absolute value of these integers. So this infinite type descent is actually an impossibility. And so what we've ended up with is a contradiction to the fact that this solution existed in the first place. Now we can also reword this in a slightly different way. We could have started at the very beginning by introducing this ordering and also assumed that A, B, C was the minimal such solution within that ordering. And then what we've done is constructed a smaller solution inside that ordering, which is a contradiction. Either way we've got it, we have that there is no integer solution to this equation. Okay, so we've proved this tool. Okay, and now we're ready to finish it off. So let's recall that our main goal was to prove that 1,674 was not a perfect cube. And I'm going to do that by expressing 1,674 as 7 cubed plus 11 cubed. Now, if this number is a perfect cube, then we have a non-trivial solution to this equation, x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed, but we just spent a bunch of time showing that that was impossible. And in fact, the full version of Fermat's last theorem already told us that that was impossible. Okay, so that's a good place to stop this problem. Maybe post in the comments other ideas that you have for this overkill series.